So I'd like to welcome you to uh, Sears Holding, Hoffman Estates campus, home of the Kardashian sisters and maybe soon Kanye West, who knows. Um, we are really honored to, to be able to host the IOBSE and its members here. Uh, and we're also extremely excited. By the way, on the 30th year anniversary, so this is very cool. And we're very excited uh, about the uh, students that we have here today that the IOBSE here has brought here. And, and the whole idea is, is, and I think SUNY said it and I heard it uh, yesterday, this is giving you a leg up. You know, as leaders and as managers, our responsibility is to coach and develop people. And boy, do you have a great, great, fantastic opportunity yesterday and the next two days. But before I continue on, I want to uh, uh, do something that probably will embarrass somebody, but I don't mean to do that. So um, yesterday I got the opportunity to sit in on leadership training where uh, uh, Will Baker and Courtney Record were doing. They did a pretty good job, huh? Well, come on, give it up for them. So one of the great things that we as leaders and managers of people get to do is not only coach and develop, but we also get to recognize great talent and promote great talent. So literally right after that uh, session, we promoted Courtney. Where are you? Stand up. Where'd he go? Courtney is our new regional director for our Kmart uh, Central Region. Uh, big responsibility, great, great individual. Congratulations, Courtney. So the next two days are meant to give you an edge. Right? We spent time talking about uh, interview skills, you know, conference skills. What do you, how, how do you maximize the benefit here? How do, you, how do you get that edge? What are you going to take away from here? Because somebody said yesterday that it's all about you. But it's all about you and how you get involved and engaged in this. Um, you have a great opportunity sitting here to connect with top LP professionals in the organization. You're also going to have an opportunity to have interviews. Maybe even get a job, walk out of here with a job, or maybe with an internship. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what else will. Um, by the way, my son is uh, graduating uh, uh, in about uh, three weeks, around the same time that most of the seniors will be, and I know he would have loved to have had an opportunity like this. So this is going to be participative. You can't just sit there. All right. So. First question I have is, who, who are seniors here among the students? Raise your hands. Okay. All right. Juniors? All right. Do we have uh, sophomores? Okay. And we have graduate students? All right. That's a nice, nice breakdown. Um, how many of you, now, by the way, Remember, in this business, we talk about integrity, right? So how many of you are criminal justice majors? Oh, yeah. All right, so put the hands down. How many of you were looking to go into a public sector career? FBI, CIA, Secret Service, DEA, state, local police? Cool. Now, here's where the integrity comes in, all right? How many of you, now you got to listen to this before, before I finish the question. How many of you had thought about a career in retail loss prevention before you heard about the IOBSC and the opportunity to come to this conference? Whoa. So we've got about 10% of the student body had thought about that. Well, I'm hoping to change a little bit of that today. So I'm going I'm to kind of go through a presentation that's going to talk to you a little bit about the 
evolution of, of loss prevention, not only just the people that it attract, kind of the, the processes and technologies, and kind of a little bit about the bad guys that you know were out there uh, trying to prevent uh, from impacting the company. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time also talking about how to go about choosing the right type of career company for you. And I, and I think there's some, some really interesting things that, that might get you thinking a little bit differently about how you go about choosing where you want to be from a career standpoint. And then, this is that teaser that they always give you like on the news or on the show, you know, and it's always at the last minute, so you gotta sit through the whole thing. But I'm gonna show you the money. I'm gonna talk about, I give you a comparison between public and private sector jobs. Uh, gentleman who's here, I'm sure you were, had an opportunity to meet Gus down, he put this together for us. And uh, maybe we can convince some of you that uh, maybe a private sector loss prevention job in retail is really a good thing to do. So let's give it a start. Um, so let's talk about terms, because you've probably heard a lot about, about loss prevention and stuff, but we used to, years and years and years ago, they talked about security. They talked about private investigations, retail security, protection. Now they talk about loss prevention or asset protection or assets protection. I'll tell you, there's a lot of debate now. People tell you, well, the difference between loss prevention and asset protection is this. The reality is, uh, when you go in and look at most of the programs, we're all doing the same thing. We're, we're, we're creating a safe environment for our customers and our associates, and we're protecting the assets of the company. So, SUNY talked a little bit about, uh, about my background. And, you know, we're all made up of, of what our backgrounds and our experiences are. And I think we talked a little bit during the leadership training yesterday about dealing with your boss and what do you do if you have that conflict? What do you do uh, if you're, you know, not clicking along with them? You know, so a little rain comes into your life and you have to be resilient enough to deal with that. So my background is probably different than a lot of you sitting here or similar to a lot of you sitting here. Single mother, six children, high school dropout, my GPA, guess what it was? I was really proud of it. 0.8, when I got a D, I was excited about that. <laughs> excited. My mother wasn't excited about that. So, you know, obviously that left me with a deficit, you know not knowing what to do, went into the Navy. Navy kind of straightened me out a little bit. Went back to school to a junior college, ended up graduating from the University of Southern California. Trojans go, although we're still under the penalty box right now in football. But it's, it's important to know that things don't, all, you don't, you don't, don't always set up right for you. And you've got to figure out how do you work through those things. You've got to have a great thought about, about what it is that you want, where you want to be, and figure out how do you get there. And you can't, because I guarantee you, as soon as you as sure as you're sitting here, there will, be, there will be that impact that comes to you, that shakes you, and you go, oh my God, what do I do now? You gotta figure out how to focus through that, how to get, get beyond that. And that's certainly what I learned. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about this kind of evolution of things. So long, long ago in a faraway land. You know, when you talked about retail, what you really had is you had ex-cops. You might have, uh, you know, a, a person that wants to get into the police force. Uh, and basically the job focused around physical security. You know, they certainly, nothing was mechanized. There's not a chance you could pull out one of these puppies and, and get information the way you can get information now. So it was pe pencil and paper. CCTV literally was a big box like that with a Viticon tube in it. And you might have 
one that you go hide someplace and no, that's not a camera, don't look at it. Uh, and then a point of sale, POS is about a cash register. And pre-70s, most of the retailers didn't have mechanized registers. In other words, registers that were hooked up that you could collect the data from and manipulate that data. It was all people sitting behind the, uh, uh, in the offices balancing out registers and counting out cash. The big things that we dealt with were shoplifting. And by the way, th there wasn't a big emphasis on going after it. It was kind of considered a, a cost of doing business. Obviously, employee thefts, uh, armed robberies was a big deal. They spent a lot, a lot of uh, energy around that. And then uh, smash and grabs. Anybody know what a smash and grab is? Huh? Yes. Yeah, it, it, and usually when we talk about smash and grabs, it's, it's twofold. It's like going to a jewelry counter, smashing and taking the stuff. Or the big one is at night they smash in the front window and grab what they can and get out before the police get there. All right, so by the way, this is not perfect the way we laid this out. But in the 70s, again, you had pre-law enforcement, retired police. Maybe now it was a second job that the individual was uh, looking to do. Physical security and safety was still a big deal. We now had mechanized registers. We now had registers that could uh, throw the information uh, out to us that we could manipulate uh, and we could analyze. It was powerful for us. We started doing check collections. CCTV started coming in. Everybody know what CCTV is? Raise your hand if you know. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what it is. Closed circuit television is what you see up in the ceilings most of the time, domes. Some of them are fixed cameras. Some of them, in the 70s, we could actually move them. Couldn't move them all the way around in a circle. They could only go part way around. You remember that? 